Okay, this is Jacob Schmidt with DeerHuntingSchool.com. I'm sitting here looking at a, a aerial photo on Google Earth. Um, this uh, piece of property that a commenter had asked a, a couple questions about, sent me some posts and stuff, um, just asking me to just kind of look at it and um, give some of my insight on it and what I had thought about it. Um, the piece of property here, if you can follow my, my cursor, it is uh, about right, it's down this here, um, and, and then it runs about right in here, uh, right, around, right around this pond. So the person that's uh, asking the question, that pond is going to be a key deal there, so we'll get to that in a minute. But um, this is the property here. So the first thing that I look for, the first time I look on aerial photos, is thick area. Okay, I look for areas that may be thick. Um, this area here could possibly be thick, as, as I'm showing here. And I know that because of some of the other videos, y'all can't see the detail as, as well as I can on um, as well as I actually can from the recording what I'm looking for is areas where I can see the ground okay because if the Sun can hit the ground it allows the undergrowth to grow up um, but areas that I can see the ground um, and for one I know this is not on the property but one is below the property here um, I noticed this area here right in here if you're following my cursor this area right in here um, this area down in here, um, right around this pond, the back side of this pond and stuff, looks like it could be pretty thick. Um, if it is, that's that's definitely some possibilities, some bedding area, especially around this pond. If this pond is on that property, I'm definitely wanting to check that out. Um, as I zoom out um, here, and I've done, done these measurements, um, but this pond here and this pond here, they're about a half a mile apart. Um, same with these, all these ponds around here, they're half a mile or more apart. Now there is one little pond here um, that these any deer in this area could get to fairly quick. Um, but the reason I say this pond, and, and one thing, this property here is not really large. It's about right around 30 acres, so it's not a really huge property. So this is a property that you could easily overhunt. Um, and I know the comments you said you, your son was tired of not seeing a lot of deer. If you're overhunting the property, um, that could be one of the reasons. Um, first thing I'm I'm going to do when I come in here and look is I'm going to come down when I'm scouting. I'm going to look at these areas as I noticed them on aerial photo. Um, and I know this is off of your property here, but I think you can get close enough to it um, to see if this is real thick down in here. Okay, see if this is real thick down in here. If this pond is on your property, you should be able to see down in here if this is thick right in here. And same thing right in here. See if that's thick. I would definitely want to see where any deer trails are. Um, this area, typically, um, areas like this are not going to have well profound deer trails like they would if you see. Let me just scroll up here real quick. Um, and I'm going to switch maps because this one here you can definitely see the map a lot better. So I'm going to switch this map so you can see here. Um, you can definitely see the map a little better. Like here where these funnels and things are here, um, and this is not the property, but if these funnels and things are going to have a lot more well-defined deer trails because the deer are funneled down and they're, they're forced to walk a lot smaller area relative to like here is more of an open wooded area, more of an area where the deer can be at any spot at any time unless you can find a preferred food source um, if you have any fruit bearing trees, persimmon trees, apple trees, pear trees, any kind of thing like that, um, the deer are going to congregate around. The deer are going to congregate around this pond if it's dry weather. So that's, and they need to get water because they have to have water. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. I definitely want to see if this these areas are thick. You see here, and I know you, you may not be able to see it, and I hope you can, but these areas here, I see the trees and I can see the ground in a lot of areas here, all up through here. Um, and I'm going to draw this out real quick on a on a picture just to just to kind of show you what I think and what I want to see um, and what I want to look for. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. Okay, um, here we go. Um, inside this black line here is um, pretty close to where the property line is. That's from me going with the off of the picture he sent me. So. First, I'm going to switch colors here. Um, first thing I'm interested in is um, even some of this is off the property, but 
in this yellow I'm going to circle some areas that I think are thick as you see this you see here that are possibly thick not for sure but possibly thick um, there's a small patch here okay um, these thick areas if the deer have pressure on them they're going to get into these really thick areas and deer white-tailed deer are prone for getting in thick areas and bedding anyways um, the more pressure they have uh, the more apt they are doing that so I want to visual C if I'm scouting this if these areas are thick um, you know because because as you can see here you can see in the ground in these trees okay and then down in here oh, right in here there's some thick area right in here um, this area down below this pond looks like it could be thick now I know this isn't on your property um, but it doesn't matter if okay so now I'm just gonna give like a just a uh, scenario of if, if these are thick okay I'm gonna switch grain because if these are thick areas and the deer are bedding in there you're gonna have places where the deer are coming in and out of these areas most of the time um, depending depending on where they're feeding and stuff now like say if this area down here is thick that we're talking about right here if this area is thick um, you may have uh, several deer trails coming out in one location okay and going out wherever to feed um, but they'll come out of the the deer I don't know why they do that but then you may have some up here now I'm just drawing this is just possibly could be um, you may have an area here where there's a where there's just a lot of deer coming out uh, one area okay and then these deer are just wandering wherever out through here um, as they get out there they're just going wherever they want so out away from these <clears throat> the reason I say that and it could be the same way up here okay that you could have deer coming out in a particular area and then of course they go and they wander off wherever the reason I say that is by if, if you're hunting um, here okay um, these if these deer are coming out of these areas if these are bedding areas okay if these deer are coming out here um, they may wander this way and then the next day they may come out here and wander this way and then they may come out right here and wander this way and then finally after you've hunted it for two three weeks one a deer may come past you or a group of deer may come past you okay so you may hunt for a long time and rather than if you were to put your deer stand here in this area where there come a lot of where all, all these trails uh, join together if you were hunting there um, or say even here if it was thick here you're hunting here where a lot of these deer uh, in the or in, I know this isn't your property but here okay and, and this may not even be where the deer are coming out I'm just using this for an example um, you want to be where the where there's a lot of trails coming together and I'm gonna clear all this off real quick um, so we don't have such a mess I'm just gonna leave just the yellow line so that's just um, that is just to let you know what you what you need to look for because I can't come walk this property but that is what I see I see possible bedding areas um, here okay see possible here I see possibly here possibly thick areas now I could be completely wrong I'm looking on the aerial photo can't walk the area the soil may be compacted there may not be able to grow but anytime I see thin areas I'm thinking it could possibly be thick okay here now what I do know that we for sure have 99.9% um, .9 sure is uh, we have water right here okay I'm gonna that is a pond I'm 99.9% sure okay now in dry weather that pond is gonna be a hot spot okay you're gonna have deer coming from all over coming towards that pond okay I'm going to use a purple um, you're going to have deer coming all over coming to one location okay that's the point is they're going to come from all over the place they're coming from one to one spot okay and where you want to be is where all these trails meet if all these purple lines are deer trails and I know that's kind of crazy you may have three trails but I'm just saying where you want to be is where most you want to be where there's a lot of deer trails coming together in one spot okay and that is one one location that 
If it's dry, they need water, there's going to be a lot of deer trails there. Yes, there's other ponds around here. Yes, the deer can be using them other ponds, but they're going to use whatever available water they have in dry conditions. So that's one, one spot of, of interest. Okay, the other spot of interest, of course, is the bedding. If these are thick, I want to get around them, look and see where there's a lot of deer coming in and out. Look and see where there's a lot of old rubs. Um, you may not see fresh rubs this time of year as I'm making this video. Um, there are fresh rubs. I've got uh, some rub lines I've been hunting. Um, I've been setting trees up on and getting ready to hunt. Um, these are hot spots this time of year because that's where the buck is coming. But the main thing is, you, is around if these are bedding areas, you're, you want to look for where there's trails, multiple trails coming out in one, one spot, okay? And where there's rub lines and old rub lines. You're going to look for old rubs, new rubs. If you find new rubs, that's great. Um, but you want to find where there's several of them in an area because that's letting you know that there's deer coming out in that area. Okay? And then them are spots. If you have, uh, you know, a few, two or three, if you have two trails coming out pretty close to each other and you can hunt both of them trails, okay, that's much better hunting two trails than one. Okay? So, now another thing that... Um, is of interest is this fence line that you said there's a ball bar fence line in here and the reason that that's of interest is it's easy to tell where the deer are going to cross um, it's, it's pretty easy to tell where they cross you may have a low spot in that fence or a couple low spots or whatever and them are going to be some good areas to um, find okay and you may have two of them pretty close together or whatever but if there's one low spot where it's really easy for the deer to cross you're gonna have multiple. You're gonna have deer walking out, and these are open woods. They're gonna walk wherever they want. Okay, um, they're gonna come down. Um, but let's just say, right here where this X is, let's just say, for instance, okay, that that's a low spot or a cut it in the fence. Well, as these deer wander, they're gonna. Most of them deer are gonna cross that, and then they're gonna wander wherever they want to go. Okay, they're gonna come through there, um, and it's gonna kind of neck them down. That's just the kind of things you look for. Um, so that's one point of interest is the fence row, okay? I want to look at that. Another point of interest I'm interested in, if, I, if I'm hunting this property, is this old vacant road down through here. Um, especially to me now, looking from the aerial photo now, uh, right in here, looks like it's pretty thick. Uh, right in here. Okay, if it's thick... If, if, if this area is thick, and this is a bedding area, that means that you can easily hunt right in the middle of a bedding area, right here on this road, and get shots at deer, if that's the case. Another point, seriously, location is here, if these are bedding areas. This is thick, okay? I can hunt in the middle of the bedding area without disturbing the deer bedded because I can get in and out up and down that road very easily. Okay, so that's what I see with this property. The rest of the property is basically you have to scout it. You have to look and see if there is certain types of food for the deer at certain times. Okay, um, so to just wrap this up, basically, I'm going to walk this property. I'm going to look for food. Okay, I'm going to look for certain types of food that the deer will use at different times of the year. Um, different types of acorn trees. I want to see what kind of acorn trees I have. I want to see if I, if I have any fruit bearing trees. I want to see if I have any uh, type of uh, honeysuckle, uh, privet, things like that that the deer will feed on later in the winter. Um, they've preyed on it year round, but they're really going to have to feed on that later in the winter. Okay, I'm going to look for them types of things. Okay, That's what I'm looking for as I'm walking through here looking for food. Okay, of course, we obviously we want to see if there's any bedding area. If there's not bedding area, okay. If there's not, if there is bedding area, we have bedding area. Okay, where it's thick. Okay, this property looks fairly flat. I, I walked it on uh, Google Earth. Looks fairly flat. Okay, so you're not going to have any ridges where the deer would probably bed or anything like that. They're probably most likely going to look for thickets. Um, so I'm looking for thickness. Um, I want to get as close as I can to the edge of the property here um, to see if this off of here is thick. Same with here. I want to get to the 
to see visually, you can stand here and look down in there and see if this is really thick without getting on the property that you can't hunt. Okay, I want to see that. So we checked if there's food, there's bedding. We know there's water. Um, so we checked if there's water. We know that for sure. We have water. Let me switch colors again. We have water here. Uh, I'm pretty sure. 99.9% .9 sure. Know for sure there's water over here. And then we want to look for any type of funneling area, which the only thing I hear, the only thing I see here um, is this fence row. Okay. Now, if there's other fence rows, you could do the same thing. So you uh, looking for funnel, okay, where the deer is going to be funneled down by anything, okay. And that fence can do that. That fence can do that. Um, and then the other thing that I'm going to look for is prime. If, if you can hunt bedding area in the rut especially, um, right here, if these are bedding areas, if, if, if the deer's deer bedding in here, if there's does bedding in these areas here, um, here and here, if there's does bedding and this old road runs right through the middle of it, I'm darn sure in the rut I want to be in there, in that road. Um, and I want to see, I want to be in there because them deer, them bucks, they're going to cross that old road, um, from this side of the bedding area to this side of the bedding area to, to, while they're breeding does or while they're looking for does, they may stay in them bedding areas. Them deer will stay in the bedding areas. If it is thick and there's honeysuckle, privet, um, small undergrowth things in there, them deer will stay in there, especially if they have water. Um, and this one's close enough to the water, even if it's dry, they can pretty much stay in there, slip out here, get a drink, and right back in it, okay? So that's what I want to look for. Them are the things I want to look for on this property here. Um, I know that areas like this, you, you generally don't have funnels. I hunt, this is the type of areas that I hunt uh, most of the time. This is actually in Oklahoma. Um, this piece of property here is, and it's right on, right, pretty close to Oklahoma and Arkansas, and I'm from Arkansas, that's where I... I live, that's where I hunt, and I hunt areas like this all the time, and these are things that I look for uh, when I'm hunting. And the other thing about this property, I'd already talked about it, but is you don't want to over hunt it. It's only about 30 acres. This is only about 30 acres, and you, I guess you and your son's hunting it. Um, so it's only about 30 acres. You don't want to over hunt it. Two people on 30 acres, if you're hunting it quite often, you're putting a lot of pressure on them deer. If you're busting the deer out and things like that. Um, so I suggest hunt it a little bit. Find, and I know hunting property is hard to come by. Um, but if you can find places where you don't hunt this every time, let these deer, let these other hunters around here, around, let the other hunters around this land hunt, pressure these deer around you and and leave this land uh, unpressured so you have hunters hunting all around you leave this land unpressured and hunt it uh, sporadically and strategically to where these deer are okay they're pressured on here they feel safe and then you're you're set up here in between these bedding areas things like that okay um, I know this is a, a pretty long video if you enjoyed the video, leave a comment, um, whatever you think about it. Um, the, the person that uploaded it, um, leave some comments on, on okay, if this is uh, thick, um, stuff like that. Because I'd like to know um, if it is. Um, leave some comments if, on deer that y'all kill and things. Um, and then I know you've walked it in some of your, your stand locations that you showed. I'm not going to just particularly point them out. Um, so... I know you've scouted in things, and, and I know that these are, you know, you didn't have stand locations in these areas that I pointed out. Um, but I haven't walked this land. I haven't seen anything. I have no idea why your stand locations were there or anything. I know that there's generally no funnels on, on land like this. So it takes the funnel out most of the time. Um, so, anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. This is Jacob Schmidt with DeerHuntingSchool.com. I hope it helps you out. I hope it helps everybody that watches this out that hunts areas like this here. I know right now this thing is a mess. Um, there's a lot of drawings on this dude. But, um, I think that y'all get some uh, good use out of it.
This is Jacob Schmidt with DeerHuntingSchool.com. Hope you enjoyed the video. For more tips on deer hunting, check out DeerHuntingSchool.com.